have no C. Uh, today, let's talk about object-oriented programming, or OOP. Uh, in this video, I'll talk about what is OOP, uh, what it means in the context of Roblox, uh, that's meta tables and meta methods, and we'll do some programming. And the programming is probably going to be most of the video. Um, so basically, the idea is that you have some class, which is like a container, and that container has methods within it that do things. I don't know. With this class, you can make multiple versions of it. You can re-instantiate it. It's like... A, there's a part and then you want to make three parts and they're each their own part and you can change a part to be read or you can change a class in some way and it doesn't affect the other ones because they're each their own thing there's also an aspect where you can extend things into making other things uh, like a part extends into a mesh part or something like that uh, but i'm not going to talk about that because i frankly do not care in the context of roblox that means there's meta tables that you got to use and with meta tables there's all sorts of meta methods the big one being index, which lets you index a table. Call one table, it will index into another table, but run it with the original table as the self parameter. That doesn't make any sense, but I'll explain it when we get to the programming part. The, I'm going to look at the big meta method index, but we're also going to look at these ones add, subtract, length, and to string. And we'll see what it is in the context of the example I'm about to do. So let's do some programming. Okay, so I'm here in Studio, and uh, I've written out a couple different files. I have uh, an inventory class, and I have an item stack class. I'm actually going to rename this. I have an item stack class. And so the inventory is going to get filled with item stacks. And I've just written out some basic code here, but what I want to do as well is let's say I create an inventory and I have a stack of steak and I have a stack of cod. What I'd like to be able to do is my inv and I want to add item steak, add item cod. And then what I'd like to do as well is I would like to say that if I print uh, the length of my inventory that would print however many items are in it so two or if, if I print if I use the length operator it'll say how many items are in the inventory and then I'd also like to say if I print the length of steak uh, and let's say this has five items in it and this has ten items in it it'll print five if I print the size of cod it'll print ten and if I say cod plus equals five, I, and then I print the length of cod, I want that to reflect 15. And then if I did vice versa, uh, it would reflect five. That's the idea. Jumping back here to the operators that I mentioned we'd be using, there's the add, the subtract, and the length, and then as well, I'll add the two string. So then the two string, if I say I want to print steak, I'd like it to print, uh, item stack steak uh, five something like that just so we can get a, a visual printout of what the item stack is so i'm going to comment this out because it's probably going to break and i'm going to get to writing all the code and then we'll do a quick review <music> Okay, there we go. So um, if I print steak here, we see five. If I print cod, we see 10. I subtract five cod from the stack and we see five cod. And then if we print steak and then we can print cod and we should see item stack cod five. Okay, so I've written it out exactly what I'd like. All right, so let's take a look at the item stack class. So there's the item stack table and the meta method for indexing this table is itself. So when we create a table and we set the meta table to this stack and we index that meta table, it will index item stack. And so if we look at it here, if we have cod here, which uh, we're returning this meta table, which is returned by setting this 
table of data. So there's the data table, which gets set to have a meta table, which is referenced as item stack. So anytime we call something on this table and it doesn't exist on this table, it's going to check item stack. So here we call cod and we look for the method get ID. Um, this table here doesn't have any get ID. It's just information. It's just data. So it's going to look in item stack. So it's going to say item stack get ID. And using the colon operator is actually the same as using the dot operator. And there's this implicit self, which is passed in through using the colon instead of the dot. So when we say cod get ID, it's going to get ID and return self, which is the data table for cod, which holds however many cod there is, 10, and it's going to return whatever that amount is. And we've set that to be cod and the amount to be 10 when we pass it in here into this table. So let's take a look at the other meta methods that I wrote. Um, the add method here and the subtract method are very similar. So for these two methods, what I do is I see this other here and I say if other is a table, then we want to see that if that table is an item stack and if the IDs are the same, then we want to add um, other get, we want to add the other amount, right? And we want to return uh, self. Otherwise, if it's a number, then we want to add that number of items to the item stack. So if we have two item stacks that have cod and we want to add them together, then it'll put like five cod and four cod, it'll make a stack. The first stack will have nine cod. So let me show an example of that. So if I print this, we should see, there's actually a few things going on here. So it's going to call the add method, meta method, which is going to add the two stacks together. And then it's going to call the two string meta method on the combined pair. So what we should see is it should output, uh, print out a stack that should say item stack cod 21. Yep. And there we go. So what this method does is when um, when we call add, which is this operation here, we get the current table and then the other thing that's being added. So it could be a number, it could be a table. We perform some operations and then we return the modified table, the modified original table, that being the, the operand on the left side of the argument there. So we can add in some error messages. So we could say print this and then we could say cod plus... We want to print cod plus x. And it's going to error because it can't add item stack, can it be added with type string? There we go. See? So we can add some error handling in there as well. Um, additionally, the length argument, underscore, underscore, len, is called when you use the hashtag operator. So in a normal table, if you add something like this, where we say test, hashtag test, this should, this should print one. There's one item in the array. Um, but in this case, when we when we call uh, the length operator on our item stack, uh, we want the item stack to return the amount of items. So we can say uh, if we print how many items are in COD here, it should print 10. And there we see, we see 10 and it returns a number. The next operator is the two string operator. And we've already seen this in action, but whenever um, you print or, so if we print COD or we say, print the two string of cod, which is really what's happening when we call print, um, it's going to print this string that we construct. And so we can use this self argument from before and we can get the ID or the amount. We can perform some operations and then we can print. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to add the ability for me to add items to my inventory by saying uh, my inf plus equals cod, my inf plus equals cod two, my inf plus e and my n plus equals stake. And then I want to say cod plus equals cod two. That's what I want to do. So then what this should do, and if I print my inventory, and then if I print uh, my inventory. So the goal here with this changes is that I want for when I use the add meta method, it's going to add and set my inventory to an inventory where we add cod and we're going to add stake to the inventory. And then we should be able to see all the items in the inventory. And I'll make a pretty printout for the two string for that. For this, what I would hope to see is that if we print the inventory, we can see that 
adding COD2 to COD because COD is in the inventory, we should see the changes be reflected across classes. So let's write it. Hey guys, so I'm here in post doing some editing and I realized that with this, you could also extend the ability that when you remove contents from an item, it could return nil and then that could trigger something in the inventory to remove the item from the inventory. I think there's a lot of extensibility for state in this. So I've written an add method. If the type of the other object being added is a table, um, and if the class name for the table is item stack, then it's gonna add the item. Uh, otherwise, it's just gonna say cannot, just gonna error out. It's gonna say cannot add with type other, and that'll break it. Um, if we do a two string, it's gonna print out the inventory very nice, so it should have uh, the inventory and then there should be a new line for each item and then uh, if we get the length it'll just return how many items are in the inventory so if we print hashtag if we print my in and then we print hashtag my in this should print zero and then if we print the length this should print two and then we print the inventory and we'll see what happens. So here we go and everything worked as expected. So we can see that my inventory, when we print it the first time, uh, we can see that it's an empty inventory. And then you can see if we print the length, there's zero items. And then we add the cod and we add the stake, we print the length and it's two. Print the inventory itself, it's gonna show us that in the first slot there's cod, in the second slot there's a stack of stake. And then if we add cod two to cod, then we should see, like earlier, when we add 10 and 11, we should see that there's 21 COD, which is now true, and there's five stake. Let's take a scroll here through the documentation. Um, so we use the index method, and we use the add method, we use the subtract method, but you can see there's a lot of other methods. Um, there's the call, which is fired when you call it like a function. Um, there's the concat, which is when you use the double concatenation operator. So basically any operation you could do on a thing, on a number, on a string, etc., it's here. So there's plus, uh, add, subtract, multiply, divide, floor division, modulus, exponential, two string, uh, equals to determine whether or not two things are equal, uh, a less than, a less than or equals, as well as the length in the iteration. So if you want to create a bunch of uh, custom functionality for your classes where you can use these shorthand expressions to add things together in your classes it might take some time to write the extent like create that extensibility but in the long run it might be easier because you can shorthand things like this like add it quickly adding an item to your inventory and it'll reflect the changes so here if you want to scroll through the documentation there's a whole description here of a set and it's uh set functionality it's a math thing if you're uh, aware basically it's a set of items and they add remove contains and it'll set an output and you can see that they do some stuff here you can check for an item and you can see they use the add method here so you can see that it will return a result ah, I see now I didn't know this either you can have meta methods use the colon operator and it will omit the self in the first in the first place i was just using the dot operator so see i learned something new all right so if you learned something let me know down below if you didn't and you want to see something different let me know down below um glad to be back hopefully i'll keep getting more videos out uh thank you guys and have a good day